I started my, uh, my college career in 1977 at the Colorado School of Mines and going into the School of Mines I really didn't have any idea what part of the mineral industry that I wanted to be uh, part of. So I attended you know, the career fairs that they had before we started freshman classes and uh, I listened to every one of the presentations and the one that caught my interest was the petroleum engineering one. Listening to the petroleum engineering presentation and learning about how they drilled for oil and how uh, they extracted the oil and then seeing where the pumping units related to the extraction of the oil, that's what caught my interest. By the time I graduated, uh, there were no jobs. The industry uh, went through an enormous uh, change in just a few years time to where the graduates in May of 82 still had job offers, but the graduates in December of 82 had no offers. I graduated not having a job even though I had interned at Mobile Oil for two summers and Sun for one summer. So it was quite a difficult time. I uh, got out and uh, with no job I began searching for a job using you know the Rocky Mountain Oil and Gas Directory, cold calling companies. So finally after a couple of months I ended up working for a small independent that was developing coal bed methane reserves in southern Colorado. I think that technical training and classes are great, but nothing beats the assignments where you actually go and get your hands dirty on real problems and real uh, issues. I think that the opportunity for a young engineer to learn a significant amount is greater on the North American shale onshore opportunities than it is on the more conventional large offshore uh, properties like our Shenzi field. Uh, difference being that there's far more wells uh, to work on. The crew change is something that the industry has been talking about now for about 10 years and the kind of the definition of the crew change is that that uh, there's a late career professionals exiting and not having enough mid-career professionals to fill the gap as we continue to recruit on the front end to build the inventory of engineers that we need to sustain the growth of the company. Internally we are planning for it. We are working everything we can to organically grow talent within our organization to fill the gaps as these senior people uh, decide to retire, but we're also actively recruiting and filling positions at the senior technical levels with people that have already left other companies uh, and are still available. They're still technically viable and they still want to contribute in a big way um, to, as they complete their career. And so the opportunity that's created uh, by the fact that We've got a, a large number of very senior technical professionals. They're like intensifiers on a frack job. They take the organization from one level and accelerate it to another because they can mentor across a broad range uh, and handle a, a large number of, uh, of young in interns and graduates that we can mentor with these guys. Our company philosophy around recruiting uh, and how we build our pipeline of technical professionals is we start with the basic premise that we recruit the best candidates from the best schools. We routinely meet to discuss people's careers, their development, so that we can fill those middle line management uh, gaps that we have as we try to manage the exit of the top end so that the effect of the crew change is at a minimal. I think the most important uh, advice that I can give based on my own experience is to uh, develop a plan early as to what you believe you would like your career to look like and what you aspire uh, to get to and start building the technical skill and, and also building on the soft skills that will make you successful as you go up in your, in your career. Set your sights out and don't deviate from your plan.